Borno is arguably the most talked about state in northeast Nigeria at the moment, having suffered from decade-long insurgency. It has transformed rapidly in infrastructure and a model of economic prosperity. Welcome to Borno Restoration. I am Jesse Tafida. But first, let's bring you up to speed with Borno Today. Conflict has resulted in a massive destruction of infrastructure in the northeast region. Borno is the state worst hit by the years of insurgency, and its people have witnessed terror firsthand. But things have now changed as residents enjoy relative peace. To sustain this development, a tax force has been set up to speak with community members on how best to ensure peaceful coexistence. This move is being driven by Media Communication for Health and Development Initiative with funding support from USAID through the Nigeria Northeast Connection Program. We felt it's necessary for us to sensitize people, you know, sensitize people on what is happening in the community so that we have a lasting peace in the community. We expect them to complement the effort of the government. The government are trying, but we want them to work directly with the community. They know the community better than anybody else. So, and they know those children in the community who are a nuisance to the community. There must be a deliberate effort for us to get people that will go into counter the narratives of any violence community. So in this regard, I believe that this tax force is a very welcome development which will go into actually spearhead the countering of violence extremism in our society. The inauguration of these young boys and girls who are going to work in our community would add value to the community so that our people will live in peace and harmony. Members of the tax force promise to work by example for the translation of peace beyond their respective areas. I know our people, I know how they are, how they live, their behavior. Being me, the peace ambassador, I, can, I, know, I know how I will handle them, I know how I will talk to the, those who are drug dealers, those who don't have work, because we are all in the same community. This 20-member counter-violence extremism tax force has been trained on early warning signs and how best to report to authorities concerned without further harm. This visit by the governor of far north region of Cameroon to the government house Maiduguri is part of a bilateral cooperation to ensure restoration of peace and civil authorities in some parts of the communities ravaged by insurgents in the region. Now the main objective of the working visit is to follow up the resolutions of the last session of the Forum of Governors of Member States of the Lake Chad Basin Commission, which took place from the 4th to the 5th of October 2021 in Yaoundé, Cameroon. It is on the repatriation of refugees back to Nigeria. It is therefore an opportunity for me, as announced earlier, to see the real, reality of the realization and account myself with the realities in the field to challenge and encourage it so that together we can know our strengths and our weakness. Borno State Governor Baba Genazulum, who is pleased with this visit, pledged that his administration would give maximum support and cooperation to find a lasting and durable solution to the over decade long crisis. The regional stabilization facility has three main mandates. One of the mandates is to improve on the existing security situation that we have in the region. The second mandate is to provide infrastructure and the last but not the least is to enhance the means of livelihood and above all strengthen transborder cooperation. At September we shall be going to the Republic of Chad and the Republic of Niger to see how we can improve 
und auch eine Relationship. Rehabilitation and resettlement of victims of insurgency has been very critical to Governor Baba Ganazulum's administration since he assumed office. He has continued to intensify efforts at closing IDP camps in the state and restoring hope in the face of adversity. Let's take this report. The Boko Haram insurgency in Borno has killed thousands and displaced millions from their ancestral homes. Borno citizens abandoned their places of abode in search for safety during the peak of insurgency and found themselves in camp. From 2012 to date, many IDPs spent most of their lives in camps across the state. But the Zulum administration came in with 10 packed development agenda, part of which is the resettlement of IDPs. The governor has continued to work closely with security operatives to ensure that all affected communities are liberated. Now that peace is returned to most areas, the state government is closing internally displaced persons camp in Maiduguri to fast track its resettlement drive. <laughs> Governor Baba Ganazlum argues that the IDP camp was becoming a permanent culture and making some citizens become totally reliant on aid, which is not sustainable. Hence, the decision to encourage safe and dignified resettlement with livelihood support. This, this occasion is of great significance to us and the entire people of Borno State. Let me commend the BSF under the chairmanship of our elder statesman. General T. White Tanjuma for the enormous contributions that it has rendered towards uplifting the standard of living of the displaced communities of Borno State since its establishment to get. The BSM had rehabilitated public buildings in Boda, Ngada, and Damasak at a total cost of about 1.6 billion naira because we can no longer keep them in IDP camps. There is growing prostitution in the IDP camps. There is growing procreation without care in the IDP camps. There is growing drug abuse in the IDP camps. Life in the IDP camp is no more sustainable. And therefore, government has decided to close all internally displaced camps within my group. We have closed a number of them. However, because of lack of funding, we are yet to close four internally displaced camps. All relocations to safe and rebuilt communities must be voluntary, as the government will continue providing livelihood support to returnees until their life gets in shape. The Victim Support Fund is piloting this exercise through the provision of cash, food and non-food items to the IDPs to enable them return to their ancestral homes and start a new life. With the realization that the government itself cannot do it on its own. So the fund from the Victim Support Fund is mainly made up of contribution from the private sector, uh, from the banking sector, from individual businessmen and women in Nigeria, 
uh, they put together under the chairmanship of T.Y. Anjuma the fund to work with government and to support mainly victims. Um, so that is really what we have been doing in Borno State. That is money they are supposed to put into something for sustainability. Rather than be waiting for food to be given to them, people should go back and start their means of livelihood, whether it's farming, whether it's trading. Uh, that particular money, we are giving them in two phases, which means we are giving them a 50% now as they go back and then as they settle down we are also working with them in the choice of the businesses or the activities that they want to do and we are monitoring and supporting them in the in the activity itself so the victim support fund will be taking money to monthly monetary trips to those communities to those local government areas led by our uh, Maiduguri um, based office uh, to make sure that people are having the support that they need in those areas. So we specifically are ensuring that the money goes into something for sustainability. Um, and then the major, the second component is they need basic things. Uh, so rather than use the money to now start setting themselves up, we've made sure they have adequate uh, amount of food item for every family. We've made sure that they have all the household utensils that they need to get settled. They have their beddings, their mattresses, their blankets. Uh, so every one of them, as you take them back, can live and survive for the next couple of months without really depending on government. Within that time, we will make sure that they are doing something that is bringing income to sustain them. For most IDPs who have yearned to be resettled after spending years in camp, it's a wish come true. She says, I won't wish for any soul to experience life in camp. I cannot explain all that has happened. But life in camp is miserable. No privacy, no freedom, and no joy. But now that we are going back, I have hope that things will never be the same again. In preparation to leave the camp, IDPs dismantle their tents one after another and load their property into vehicles that will convey them to their communities. The women took their time to do the dishes and also arranged their stuff from here straight to Baga. Children of the camp are not being left behind and have also packed their luggage in preparation to bid the camp goodbye. <laughs> Government on its part reassures the IDPs that it is safe for them to go back. No doubt that this effort by the Zulum administration is a renewed hope for people who have suffered 12 years in insurgency. Certainly, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. I had a chat with the Commissioner for Local Government and Emirate Affairs, Sugun Meli, about governance and economic development in the state. Take a listen. I am the longest serving Commissioner. I worked with the former Executive Governor of Brunoski, Senator Kashim Shetima, who is 
presently the vice presidential candidate of our party. I worked with him as commissioner for the uh, eight years that he served Borno. And now in 2019, when Bahana Umar emerged as the governor, he still uh, appointed me as honorable commissioner. Uh, with Bahana Umar Azulum prop, we were in a very uh, serious uh, challenges of developing Borno when he was commissioner of Triple R. I could recall he was very bitter in resettling back the IDFs. I could recall when Professor Bana Omar spent 11 good months in Bama when Bama was no go area. He completely relocated to Bama. He rebuilt about 11,000 houses in Bama. When he was the commissioner of Triple R, he insisted that he has to see the relocation of Bama or else he put up his resignation as commissioner of Triple R. Then the governor was convinced beyond reasonable doubt that he will talk to the military so that Bama will be resettled. I beat my chest to tell anybody that the development and structures that are put in place in banking now was never visible before the insurgency. And coming back to my own local government, when Bana Umara was the commissioner of Triple R, he called me to his office. He said, Honorable Commissioner, as my colleague, we need to resettle Gudumbali. And he 100% financed the movement of all the vehicles and the IDFs and convert them back to Gudumbali. We spent the night with him in Gudumbali. So he now coordinated all these resettlements of Mafa, Dikwa, Gamborungala, Kalabalige, uh, uh, Kondega, Dalori, Damasak, Gubio, to some extent uh, Gajiram, Monguno. So he did all what he could to see that all the IDFs in Borno that are residing in Maiduguri are returned back to their localities to fix the pieces of their lives, which I am now happy to inform anybody that cares to know that out of the percentage, probably about 2 million IDFs in Borno, we have almost relocated 80 to 85 percent of the IDPs back to their ancestral homes and they have started picking the pieces of their lives. Because with this rainy season, almost all those who we have returned have started their farming activities. Okay. Now talk to us about the security situation in Borno and what is the state government doing to sustain the relative peace being enjoyed? The security situation in Borno is very uh, practical to the eyes of any body because around 2014 and tail end of 2014 I can say you cannot even come to the office to sit down and function as a commissioner but today I will beat my chest to tell anybody that the sub, one of the safest states in Nigeria is Borno. Because the governor has done his best and he's still doing his best to see that security situation in Borno is improved beyond any human imagination. He has traveled far and near to see that the security situation in Borno improves by visiting Mr. President. To tell Mr. President, black and white, what is on ground. 
he visited the president of Chad so that they will have collaboration so that his security men will man the border along Nigeria Chad. He traveled to Cameroon to talk with the president of Cameroon. He traveled to Niger. So all in a way to improve the security situation, of particularly Burma. And Alhamdulillah, today, as I'm talking to you now, the theater commander, the sector commander in Mongono Sector 3, the sector commander 2 in Damaturu, who is in charge of almost all the southern parts of the state, they are working hand in hand with the governor to see that Borno is safe and security improves. The Commissioner of Police and the Director of State Security Service, they give security report on daily basis to the governor. With this, he now empowered the Civilian Joint Tax Force to make internal security very visible in almost all the 2011 27 local governments by providing them with vehicles, by providing them with allowances. He is paying every member of the civilian JTF 20,000 naira per month. And even Maiduguri Damatu Road, the governor is very much concerned about this road. He procured vehicles and codenamed Rapid Response Squad, which is headed by one of the Deputy Commissioner of Police, Babalola, 600 of the civilian joint task force members and the police are now on daily patrol of Maiduguri Damaturu mm -hmm. Road with 60 Hilux vehicles on this Maiduguri Damaturu Road only. So when you now see the total num uh, amount of allowances he paid on the personnel, the cost of the purchase of the vehicles, the cost of maintenance of these vehicles, and the fuels they consume along this on a daily basis is something to write home about. What role is your ministry playing in the developmental agenda of Professor Baba Genazulu? In all the developmental activities the governor is doing, Ministry for Local Government is contributing. Because the governor will now direct for the construction of government lodges in local governments. He will direct for the construction of local government secretariats because most of them were burned down. So we have to reconstruct them. And I'm happy that almost all these local government secretariats in the state, almost all, all the government lodges in the local governments, almost all the, the departments in the local governments, all these structures were burned down before during the insurgency, but he has rebuilt all this and they are now fully occupied. So we are all partnering with the developmental scribe of Professor Bano Marazo. Uh, now, you've just been reappointed the commissioner of this same ministry. What should we be expecting from you? Uh, the expectation will be high, but we will continue from where we stopped. You know, I was Commissioner Ministry for Local Government from 2019. When we were dissolved, then after some months, I was reappointed and posted to Commissioner for Local Government, the same ministry. So I will continue from where I stopped. Finally, what message do you have for the good people of Borno State? Uh, my message to the good people of Borno State is for us to, uh, to exercise at least some degree of patience in the state because the developmental strive that the governor is doing he has bulldozed it and now we have uh, financial challenges because of the russia ukraine war so that is my appeal and also my appeal is we are now in a, a political Era. And almost all the, 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 the primary elections for producing candidates has already been 
concluded. Uh, candidates emerged. So we have to rally around all our candidates that were produced by our party, either in the State House of Assemblies, either in the House of Representatives, either in the Senators, either in the Vice Presidential Candidate or the Governor, so that when you, your party emerge as the winner, then you have the uh, level playing ground for even complaint. So they should also come out in mass to vote for the party, particularly this time that we produce the vice presidential candidate. So we have to now compete with the presidential candidate so that the votes that are cast in, uh, in Borno should, be, should go high so that we will not be challenge or somebody to tell us that we have the vice presidential candidate but our votes are very negligible. So that's why I am appealing to the, 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 the voters to come out in mass to vote to ensure that our vice presidential candidate produces the highest vote cast during the election. That is my appeal. Market on this episode of Borno Restoration. I am Jesse Tafida. Thanks for watching. And always remember that good leadership is as important as the followers.